Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Exotic Astrology again. And after a long time, I am starting with the Bhagavad Gita playlist again. So from now on, hopefully, we'll try to do one video from the Bhagavad Gita every week. And uh, we started with the chapter two, contents of the Gita summarized. It is almost January 2018, I saw. And finally now is the time that we start again all right so today we will continue with the second chapter and we'll also discuss an overview of the first chapter because that is something which we discussed long back so basically what happens in the first chapter we all know that the armies assemble in kurukshetra to fight the pandavas and the kauravas and now arjuna is not able to fight in fact his gandiva his bow has slipped down from his hand and he has become helpless he feels that how can he kill the sons of the Tarashtra and how can he kill drona and bhishma and these personalities and he is overcome with grief as the gita says okay and then chapter 2 starts, the name of the chapter is Contents of the Gita Summarized. So we have already discussed the first and the second, but due to the interest of time, uh, because it has been a long time, what I think is uh, we should again discuss, okay? Okay, so let us start with the first verse of the second chapter and as usual if you are new to the channel then please subscribe to it and if you have not watched the videos or in this playlist uh, you will find it please watch the videos otherwise you may be clueless of what is going on and in between i had uh, done the queen kunti prayers so you can also see those videos okay they're very beautiful videos they will give you uh, the consciousness to approach the gita like kunti devi okay okay and yes god is there with you all the time just look to him and don't just look here also today we are going to hear what he's saying okay because lord krishna will start speaking in fact he already started speaking okay so the first verse goes like this sanjay uvacha Tam tatha kripya vishanti ashru purna kulekchanam visidantam idam vakyam vacha madhu sudana. The translation is as follows Sanjaya said, seeing Arjuna full of compassion, his mind depressed, his eyes full of tears, madhu sudana, Krishna spoke the following words. So that means Krishna is going to start speaking now. Okay. The purport is material compassion, lamentation, and tears are signs of ignorance of the real self. Compassion for the eternal soul is self realization. The word Madhusudana is significant in this verse because Krishna was the one who killed Madhu. Madhu is the name of a demon. And now Arjuna wanted Krishna to kill the demon of misunderstanding that had overtaken him in the discharge of his duty no one knows where compassion should be applied wow compassion for the dress of a drowning man is senseless should i repeat compassion for the dress of a drowning man is senseless a man fallen in the ocean of nuisance cannot be saved simply by rescuing his outward dress Okay, so basically that's the thrust of this verse that we should use our compassion in the right way. And because Arjuna is a Kshatriya, this kind of a conduct was not expected out of him. Okay? He was expected to fight for Dharma. And then let us briefly touch on the second verse where Lord Krishna starts speaking finally. Shri Bhagavan Uvacha Kutastva Kashma Lamidam Vishame Samupasthitam Anarya Jushtam Aswargyam Akirti Karam Arjuna. The Supreme Personality of Godhead said, 
my dear arjuna how have these impurities come upon you they are not at all befitting a man who knows the value of life they do not they lead not to higher planets but to infamy so krishna is telling him that your duty is to fight but the way you are behaving it does not befit you actually and krishna is very uh, particular in the choice of his words okay we will see see that later on because in the next verse you will see he uses a word called parantapa okay the word parantapa means chastiser of the enemy one who completely finishes or crushes his enemies but the thing is why krishna uses those words because now krishna has addressed arjuna as uh, arjuna in this verse okay akirti karam arjuna okay later on he says parantapa so why does he say that because he wants to hint to arjuna that you are capable of killing everybody in this all the uh, kurus okay you have already done that in virat you have defeated all the kurus the entire army of the kurus so now you should be doing the same thing you should get up and fight that is what krishna is hinting okay so now we discussed about the third verse and uh, the second verse so now we will go to the third verse okay so krishna is continuing to speak in the third verse klebiyam masma gava partha naitatvay upadyate Chudram Hridaya Dorvalyam Hridaya Dorvalyam Tyaktoshthita Parantapa Then the translation is O son of Pritha Pritha means it's uh, meaning Kunti Devi here okay because Arjuna is the son of Kunti O son of Pritha do not yield to this degrading importance it does not become you give up such petty weakness of heart and arise o chastiser of the enemy purport arjuna was addressed as the son of pritha who happened to be the sister of krishna's father vasudev yes this is a reference to kunti devi here kunti and vasudev are brothers and sisters therefore Arjuna had a blood relationship with Krishna. If the son of a Chatriya declines to fight, he is Chatriya in name only. And if the son of a Brahmana acts impiously, he is a Brahmana in name only. So here Chatriya means not uh, at a dogmatic uh, caste level. It means the people who have the responsibility to protect. Okay, the word. Chhatriya means Chhatatrayate, which means one who delivers you from pain and suffering and hurt. Okay. Chhata means hurt. Or they say na Chhati. Chhati means loss. So one who uh, gives you freedom from loss. Okay. Basically, one who protects you, the king. So the king should not decline to fight if it is required. And if the son of a Brahmana acts impiously, he is a Brahmana in name only. Okay, so Brahmana is not who just have who just have a name called you know Goswami or Bharadwaj or Sharma. That's not a Brahmin. Okay, a Brahmana means Brahma Janeti Ti Brahman, which means he is very well aware of Brahma, which means spiritual spiritual topics and he knows the conclusion of the scriptures okay and he acts and behaves in a way uh, by setting his life as an example so if he acts impiously he is a brahmana in name only okay so many times people say oh i am from a brahmin family so called brahmin family and i keep doing this i do that so that means that person is just uh, in an illusion that he is a brahmana okay a brahmana is one by qualities not by birth such chatriyas and brahmanas are unworthy sons of their fathers therefore krishna did not want arjuna to become an unworthy son of a chatriya beautiful 
Arjuna was the most intimate friend of Krishna and Krishna was directly guiding him on the chariot. But in spite of all these credits, if Arjuna abandoned the battle, he would be committing an infamous act. Therefore, Krishna said that such an attitude in Arjuna did not fit his personality. Arjuna might argue that he would give up the battle on the grounds of his magnanimous attitude for the most respectable Bhishma and his relatives. But Krishna considered that sort of magnanimity mere weakness of heart. Such false magnanimity was not approved by any authority. Therefore, such magnanimity or so-called non-violence should be given up by persons like Arjuna under the direct, direct guidance of Krishna. Okay, so the thing is why Arjuna is feeling very magnanimous because he is attached to Bhishma, Drona and uh, in general his family and his relatives. So, what he is telling is that Oh, actually, you know, why should I fight? Better than this, you know, I don't fight. Okay, so he's giving different sorts of arguments as we see in the first chapter. But what is Krishna telling him? Krishna is telling him that, my dear Arjuna, all these arguments that you are giving is not correct. None of this is correct because the Kurus, they have always sided with Adharma, okay, irreligion. Religion in a gross sense or you could say in a subtle sense also. They have always done wrong activities. Okay. And uh, their life is a great threat to the entire humanity and the entire world at large. Okay. So they must be wiped out of this earth. Only then peace and harmony and dharma and spirituality will be restored in this world. Otherwise it's not possible. So, so Krishna is telling Arjuna that Focus on your duty. Don't just focus on what you feel inside. Okay, what you feel is not very important as what you should be doing. Okay. So the point here Krishna is trying to tell him is that you are born as a Chatriya uh, and your activities are also like a Chatriya. So be like a Chatriya. Don't just uh, go on forgiving people. Okay. That's not your task. Because if uh, Arjuna would have not uh, picked up his Gandhi and started fighting, then he, I mean, if he would have uh, gone and said, you know, oh, I forgive you, all of you, okay. Then what would happen? The Kurus, they would win the war before even the war started. And they would go on exploiting and torturing and tormenting others like they did with uh, Kunti, Draupadi, Yudhishthir, Arjun and all the Pandavas. So, Krishna does not approve of this so-called superficial uh, sentimentalism, okay. So, many times people think that, oh, so Gita is a sentimental book. No, it's not a sentimental book. There is full of logic here, okay. So, Krishna is telling that this sort of magnanimity is mere weakness of heart, okay. He uses the word Hridaya Dorbalyam. That is the word which is used. So, non-violence should be given up in such cases, okay, which means that non-violence as they say ahimsa is very good, okay. So, that therefore, many people uh, who are going ahead in the spiritual journey, like they, they take to vegetarianism, okay, they do not eat meat, they stop killing animals. But this sort of non-violence, which is merely a weakness of heart, which which is actually not because of uh, some, some scriptural basis, but because of your soft uh, corner for somebody who is unworthy of that corner. That kind of non-violence has to be given up. Okay. So, what Krishna is trying to do is, in this verse, he is trying to pull Arjuna towards his duty. Krishna is reminding him of his duty. <coughs> okay. So, Many times we may think that, oh, I don't know what I should do you know, in life. So, if we can find somebody like Krishna, which means if we can find some guide or some guru or some counselor or some advisor, then 
our life will, will change because the moment we want to do something wrong or we go wrong then like the way krishna is reminding arjuna of his prowess and his duties we will also be guided by somebody okay the, by that special person and then we will ensure, we will ensure that i mean that person will ensure the way krishna is ensuring that we do not do uh, anything which is outside of our uh, responsibilities okay so here arjuna out of his uh, sympathy out of his attachment now of course as in the first chapter it is said you know that these are all symptoms of a great soul the arjuna he he's he's a very great soul of course so it is it's very natural to be uh, attached to one's family members there's nothing wrong in that but the problem is in his case the he, the kulus his family members and cousins they are not ordinary people okay and uh, there as lord krishna says that yada yada hi dharmasya kla nirbhavati bharata abhyutthanam dharmasya tadatmanam sajamyaham that one of the reasons i take birth is to annihilate the demons okay demons doesn't mean some dogmatic group of people who are bad but demons are basically visible everywhere you can see demons today also okay those who are doing uh, activities which harm others okay killing people robbing people abusing people you know any kind of activity which takes away somebody else's happiness or uh, pleasure or somebody's freedom or somebody's right to live okay that person is actually a demon so anybody can be a demon <laughs> okay so it's not that the demon means somebody whose uh, teeth will come out and you know they will have horns or you know they will have long hair okay it's not necessary a demon can be anybody maybe uh, somebody in your home or in your uh, family or in your office anybody can be a demon so the word demon uh, is by the asura that's the word which is used okay Asura means asura. Sura means flow. Yes. So as they say, na sur me sur milao. In Hindi they say. So which means asura means one who goes against the flow. Okay. So for example, suppose uh, there's a, there's some animal who wants to live, but you go and kill that animal because you want to eat the flesh. Okay. So you are depriving that animal from his birthright. To live okay so that's like a demon one who goes on killing animals okay so i mean i'm not saying that everybody who does that is a demon but i hope you are able to understand what i'm saying that demon doesn't mean that oh somebody from some other planet will come and you know he will start terrorizing the universe it's not like that okay so that is what krishna is telling and that's the big secret that if we have somebody like krishna who can always uh, guide us who can remind us of our original purpose in life which is spiritual elevation then our life will be safeguarded because this material world as the scriptures say padam padam yad vipadam natesham that this material world every step there is a danger padam padam yad vipadam padam padam every step there is a danger okay and at times we become sentimental and we end up showing fake compassion towards somebody like arjuna is planning to do it now but he will not be able to do it or he will not do it later on of course so at times or at times the other uh, we are at the other side of the river we we can forgive somebody we should forgive somebody but we end up punishing them okay more than what they deserve so if we have somebody like krishna who can tell us that hey you're going you're going on the wrong side you know then we will be on the right right track okay so just pray to krishna that i also get somebody like you okay because the way arjuna's life was centered around krishna and what krishna said 
so similarly we can also center our life around that person okay and then our spiritual elevation is rest assured okay thank you very much and we will discuss more on the gita next week and i will also try to upload a video on shivan bhagavatam this coming week and yes god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him and yes uh, if you are new then please subscribe to the channel and if you have not watched the gita videos then please watch it again in the playlist and if you want a consultation from me then you can go down to the description section where you will find the link to my website okay thank you very much and see you soon